Hallelujah. All right. Can we get into the word of God briefly? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get into the word of God briefly. John chapter 9, verse 1. So we continue our teachings on emotional, you know, emotional healings. John chapter 9, verse 1. And today, I really want to talk to you about one of the ways to get out of emotional wounds, states, which is meaning, meaning, meaning. <laughs> John chapter 1, John chapter 9, verse 1. As Jesus passed by, see what Jesus Christ saw. He saw a man that was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, and said, Master, who did say it? Because remember this man was blind from birth. So, you know, the way they thought that time, it's God punishing somebody. And if God is punishing them, someone sinned. So, excuse me, Lord, who sinned? They said, who did sin? Is it the man that was, is it the man that was born blind? Or his parents that he was born blind. I wanted, what I wanted to notice is the meaning they gave to the situation. The meaning they gave to him was that God was punishing somebody. When people, so when people have emotional wounds, they have emotional wounds because something happened and what happened, they gave a negative meaning that wounded them. And I'm not saying that bad things will not happen. But there are other meanings that can make you grow out of it. So look at verse 3. Look at what Jesus Christ said. You know, I love Jesus Christ in terms of meaning and perspective. Verse 3. Then Jesus answered and said, Excuse me. Neither had this man seen. I could imagine Peter's head going nuts. Because some of you are saying that the reason why I'm single, you've given yourself a negative reason why you're single. You're giving yourself a negative reason why something happened to you. You're giving yourself, this is the meaning of this. And the, the thing is that you will hurt yourself by giving yourself very terrible meaning. You said, well, God doesn't love me. And if that's the meaning you give yourself, you hurt yourself some more. So these people are giving themselves one meaning that number one, God doesn't like me. God is punishing either the person that was born or God is punishing the parents. The question is that the areas where you're depressed, what meaning are you giving yourself that's making it worse for you? So the Bible says, and Jesus answered and said, neither has this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God. Jesus Christ said, listen to me, this thing is not about this man. This is about the parents. This thing is that something just wants to happen right now. And what will happen right now will be documented in the Bible. So much so that people that were born with eyes will not see their story in the Bible. But this man that was born without eyes, his own story will be in the Bible. See what verse 4 says. It says, no, verse 3, I'm, I'm coming back, back to verse 3. It says, and Jesus answered and said, neither had this man seen nor his parents, but that the work of God should be made manifest. You know, Jesus Christ gave us another meaning. I'll give an example. So you're divorced. And the meaning you give yourself is that I'm a useless man, I can't keep a wife. If that's the meaning you give to yourself, you will keep hurting yourself until you lose your self-esteem. So you're single. So, you know, so just different meaning. So let's say you had a child outside wedlock. And you say that, oh, it means I'm loose. That's the meaning you give yourself. That I'm loose. And I'm a useless person. How can a useful person that has a future have a child outside wedlock? You were raped when you were young. And the meaning you give yourself is that I'm a nobody. That's why someone could sleep with me. I'm only saying that, number one, the experience happened. But the meaning you give it will not tell you if it will be a blessing or a curse. So, number one is the experience. Number two is the meaning. The number three is the outcome. And I'm saying to you there, because there are people under the sound of a voice, you're struggling with where you are, but what meaning are you giving to yourself? You know, someone says that, someone said to me, you know, we're just joking, see, we're talking about my mom, he said, oh wow, you must, really, you must really hate your mom. I said, I'm not sure the word is hate. I said, the reason why is that, 
my mom needed to play her role for me to become who I am. You know the thing? If my mom did not play her role, I would not turn out exactly the way I turned out. I would have turned out some other way. So, sometimes, uh, and let me, I, I wrote here somewhere. Sometimes, when something bad happens to you, ask yourself this question. Oh, how is it meant to grow me? It's meaning, it's meaning, how is this what? Meant to what? Grow me. So you lost money in business. Let's say you had a terrible breakup. Rather than saying to yourself that, oh, I, I, I can't keep a man and give you some other thing. Ask yourself, how is this meant to grow me? Let me show you the power of meaning. James chapter 1 verse 2. 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 Because a lot of people are struggling with depression. Let's read together. One to go. Are you ready? One to go. What does it say? My brethren, do what? Count it what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, have, well, I, I wish I had that thing they use for mathematics for children. What, 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 what do you use? Counter. You know, you know yes, sir. to count. Do you have water there? Give me all those water covers. Water covers, water covers. Give me all those water covers. Yeah. Give me that table also. So that, bring a camera for me. Give me, give me that water cover also. Give me more water covers, yeah. I need two more. Give me, give me more water covers. Yeah, yeah. Do you have more? Thank you. I, I love this. I, I, let me show you what this is. You need to watch it on the screen. We're going to primary school. Mm. Yeah, this is fine. So it's still count it all joy what is it one two one equals to three what is this is this one this no one you only counted it as one is this number one but it's one of the crown but you've counted it as one you've assumed because i can use a stone so it says count it so when you have all this experience count it one then this is what two this three so they will tell you when you're doing kinematic maths one plus two equals to what three so say one two three equals to what one two three the question is that this is not one two and three but what has happened in this condition is that they taught you to count the counters as numbers so see what god is saying to us he said my brethren count it when you fall into diverse temptation, it's a count it all joy. So, it's true you lost money, but counter one. It's true you lost a relationship, counter two. And what should you count it at? Not one, two. Count it as joy one, joy two, joy three. So, all the three breakups you had, joy one, shego, joy two, funto, chedu, joy three. So I was a pastor, I don't want that kind of joy. Listen to me. <laughs> what God is saying is this. You can't change your past, but you can change the perspective of your past. Yeah. Count it all joy. So, he says, count it all joy when you fall. Remember, it's a fall. So, when I fall, I don't count it as pain. I count it as joy. And the difference between how you count it as joy and how to count it as chain, pain is the perspective that you have. So let me say this quickly. I, I'm just going to finish because I, I don't want to go beyond time today. So I'm going to say this quickly here. When something happens to you, <laughs> ask yourself, what else could this mean apart from pain? 
that's a good thing to ask yourself. What else could this mean apart from negativity and pain? The reason why is that the natural human mind draws you towards negativity, draws you towards pain. Secondly, ask yourself, what should this thing grow in me? Then thirdly, ask yourself, what mindset will I need to have so that this does not impact me beyond now? Glory to God. I say glory to God. Then you begin to count it as joy. You know why it's important? You can't be grateful and be angry. You can't be grateful and be depressed. You have to choose one. Okay, let me take two, two cases of people that want to share with me something that is depressing them and something they are struggling with and we can help them process. I've given you the theory. I want us to help us process the practical. Is that okay right now? Yes. No, talk to me. Is that okay? Yes. So if you want to share, just raise up your hands or you have a friend that wants to share, raise up your hands and we can take it from there. The lady in lemon green, yeah? The lady over here. You can let me take the table. Yeah. Hello. Tell me your name. You can actually have your seats. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. So, you mentioned earlier about having failed relationship. Yeah. That's my situation. Okay. So you need to tell me what happened. I don't know what that means. Okay. So, I'm in that situation when it's nearly okay. It's nearly getting better. It's almost as if it's going to be a next level for me. I, you know, in you, my relationship. You know the thing? I don't want to tell me assumptions. Just tell me a story. Okay, I was dating this person. Because this way, you're going to make my head be going around. I'm try, don't give me mathematics work to do. Just tell me something, you know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. So, I had a relationship three years ago. Okay. And I was engaged. Well, it was toxic. Okay. So, I made a decision and then I left. And from that time till now, it's been... I met someone, we are in a talking stage, and boom, the person is not interested again. Okay. So how do you feel about this? I feel depressed. Why do you feel depressed? Most times I cry. When, it, when I'm not busy. Because you I'm, cry? I cry. Why do you cry? I cry because I feel it's... I feel, is it that I'm not best enough? I'm You're not, not good enough. I'm not good enough. You're not attractive enough. I'm not attractive enough. Okay. So it gets me depressed. And so what, what have you done to make yourself more attractive? And when I discovered that, okay, I've had a series of failed relationships, I actually checked my attitude. Okay. And then so let me just ask about the question. How many failed relationships have you had? 25, 10, 5, no, 3? not up to that. Yeah, or what, what is it? I, I put a stop to it after three trials. No, no, no. You, you put a stop to it. You've only had three failed relationships. Yes. Okay, just a question. If you attend this church, how many is the average relationship you have to date for you to be married? Four to six. Four to six. Just statistics, just statistics. I'm not saying you. Church members, how many people do you have to date before you eventually become a four to six? Mm, you refuse that one, right? You refuse that, I mean. Okay, let me ask those that are married. Where, where are the women that are married here? How many did you date before you got married? Four. One, good. I'm just asking your friend. Text your friends that are married. Ask how many people they dated before they got married. There would always be exception of someone that married dated one person. But that is not the norm. It's just like when it comes to Wahek, they would have nine A1s. But are they up to ten? Exactly. I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong. But the reason why, let me tell you, the first reason is this. There's an assumption in your mind that, and this assumption affects born again a lot. And that's why a lot of born again even force themselves to marry who they should not marry. Because in their mind, we cannot break up. Even when it's not working. So they eventually marry and out unhappy and they break up. All of you that were in campus fellowships in your universities, did you notice as soon as you left campus, all those relationships scattered? All those relationships, most of them scattered. Because it was communal pressure that kept them together. So the first thing, the first thing, my lady, what's your name again? 
Esther. Esther. So the first thing Esther is that I think that the premise on which you operate, like after three relationships, I knew something was wrong. I think you have to re-examine that. So question, how many times must you date to marry according to you? I've had friends that just dated once I got no, no, married. No, 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 no. I never said you don't have friends. But you also have friends that have dated five or ten times I've gotten married. Why did you choose it one time? I'm, only, I'm not disputing that you don't have friends. I've said that those three things happen. But I'm only saying that that's not the norm. So I want to ask you, did you, get, did you have friends in school that got all A's in YEC? Yes. Did you get all A's? No. What's wrong with you? Is there something wrong with because you didn't, get, you didn't get all A's? You're just normal. So the first thing, let me, t- let me also tell you about depression. Sometimes the cause of our depression is expectations that are not very real. Yeah, expectations. So for example, now, a lot of born again guys say, I'm looking for virgin. I, I wish you all well. But virginity, see, virginity and marital success have no correlation. If you, the thing about someone, the virginity can be a problem. I know people that the virginity was what destroyed the marriage. I, I'm telling you somebody I know that it was the virginity that destroyed the marriage. I'm not saying that don't marry a virgin. I, I, how can I be a person on the value that value? No. But I'm only saying to you that sometimes it's the, in your head that because the person is a virgin, you'll be a very good wife. What it takes... To be a virgin is different. What it takes to be a good wife is different. Yes. It's just like the same thing because a pastor will be a good husband. How is he connected? You can be a pastor and be a bad husband. Praise God. So back to you, my sister. I think the first thing is that you need to... So, and this is the power of meaning. As soon as she did it, three people, she said there's something wrong with me. I don't think so. But... The reason why, and because you said something wrong with you, then something that becomes wrong with you. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Right. So you need to begin to say yourself that the people I dated and did not work was part of my learning process. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Tell me something you learned from the first relationship. Um, the first one was... What did you learn? He said I overtick a lot. You what? He said I overtick a lot. Overtick? Yes. What does that mean? Like overthink. Oh, is that what you learned? Or oh, that's your fault? He said that was my fault and I tried working on it. What did you learn? You know the problem right now? Because you've seen your relationship as pain, you have not slowed down to learn something. And the tendency that you keep repeating the same mistakes in other relationships. But if you know it as a growing experience, you will slow down and be like, okay, the relationship with Shekin was great. What did I learn? I learned one, two, three, four. This is great. This is not so great. There's nothing wrong with you. Just did it three people. Awesome. How many of you have dated three people before? To be honest. Hands up. Hands up. You dated three people. Just hands up. Formally or informally, it doesn't matter. You know, yeah. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. See. See, you're all on your roll. I remember data three for your roll, on your roll. Hands up. Data three, formally or informally? You haven't, the lady beside you. Not up, formally or informally? Informally means that you were around each other, although it was not defined. But I'm just telling you that. It's, I'm not downplaying your experience. It's like someone told you that in Nigeria, I have malaria. It's not a big deal. But if you have malaria in the US, it's a problem. So I don't want you to feel as if there's something wrong because the feeling that there's something wrong is the meaning you've given to it. So now that you know, and what I told you that the average person dates between four to five people, what I've told you that is actually science. Like it's proven. It's proven science. It's not, I didn't make it up in my head. I know that I said it's not dated people. That's not true. You dated in your primary school. You dated in your secondary school. You say it's not really dating. Keep lying to yourself. Who did you kiss first? 
you can ask the lady beside you that says you're not in three people or she will be telling you who she met in primary and secondary school didn't you have a boyfriend in your, in your move move my sister didn't you have a boyfriend in your primary school tell me did you have a boyfriend in your primary school yes in your secondary school did you have one or two in your junior secondary did you have any boyfriend something like that in your senior secondary did you have any boyfriend something like that again that's three oh in your uni, did you have a boyfriend? In year one, you had one. Did you, uh, one, one boyfriend tried the whole of uni. How many did you have in uni? Like what? Maybe. Like three? Often. Like what, how many did she say? Oh my God. Give her the microphone, yeah? Oh what? Okay, so Pastor B, I'm really only... <laughs> No, you're not the subject today. Don't make yourself the subject. Just answer the question. Yeah. In uni, how many boyfriends do you have? Did you have one or two? You had none. Two. Two. Yes. And you say you've not had over three. I've counted five. Oh, <laughs> praise God. I said praise God. All right. But do you understand what I'm saying? So the first thing is, so the first thing is, it's, but the second thing, which is a deeper thing, is that why does something go wrong in your relationship and you think you have the problem? Then, you know, then this is the most sensitive part, this is the most serious part. There's a lot of attachment you put to marriage that can cause you to be disappointed. So do you you love a lot of attention you need someone to make you, you know, tell me yeah i'm not no i never said that you're an attention freak but you love people to pay your attention yes okay so your, your parents they live together or whatever yes, life they live yeah. together okay so if you're not if you're single what does it mean to you it means you're unattractive so everybody that is single is unattractive No, tell me what it means the reason why is that the reason why you break down is that it means something to you personally is that true well sometimes i i brace up and then i use my business to cover up all my emotions and but what exactly is missing as a single person like what 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 what's that terrible thing that you what's that negative thing that you feel you said you're unattractive right that way you're not you're not yeah i just feel something is wrong with yeah, me. yeah within you like like what because you have an idea of what is wrong what, what do you think is wrong he said that um maybe an attrition uh, in mm -hmm. my character or there's something wrong with your character what, what do you think is wrong with your character i have checked all around yeah nothing nothing so what have you told yourself is wrong after you have checked because you still come up with something it's not enough you still tell yourself that something's yes, wrong what? that's at some point i tell myself you know what i'm enough you know. And then sometimes I break down completely. So why, why do you break down? At the point where you break down, why do you break down? What do you think is wrong that makes you break down? I feel there's still something. There's still something. So what do you what do you point to when you say there's something? I can't point to anything. But it comes to your mind. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. Does it? Maybe your skin color. Or maybe maybe sexually you're not great. You know that kind of thing. My skin color is great. Your skin color is great. Is it that you need to be slimmer? You need to be bigger somewhere. It occurs to you sometimes, right? The, the reason why is that the more you feel this way, the more you lose your self-esteem. Yes or no? Don't tell me. Does it affect your self-esteem? Yes. Yeah. The reason why and the reason why all that happened is because you continually put yourself in the face. And the fact that nobody is dating you right now or you had broken relationships could might not be anything pertaining to you. An image with pertaining to you because you are growing. But I'm only saying that you must not personalize it. What you need to do is to give it another meaning. Instead of saying that I lost a lot of things, say, how is this growing me? So let me tell you how this grows you. Number one, you begin to learn how to deal with you because you're alone by yourself. So all the weaknesses you have, you would, you know, I don't want to say that. You know, sometimes I wish I'm single. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I'm single. Just sometimes. 
Because even if I want to step out now, I have to have a conversation. All of you here, if you decide not to sleep at home today, nobody will call you. If you want to travel tomorrow, you just have to make a phone call. I have to do explanations, discussions, conversations like that. I'm not saying it's bad. But I'm only saying that each stage has its own challenge. Sometimes I want to feel as if I don't have children. You don't know what it means? When you have children, you can be reckless with your money. Just spend all your money on yourself. Like many of you now, you've finished your money for this month. When you have children, you have to think that your children can have needs that are not in the plan and you must be ready. Praise God. What do you think, my sister? Has it been helpful or you think I've not gotten you? You're getting me. I'm getting you. So I think, let me tell you, I don't think anything is wrong. I think what is wrong is that you need to change the meaning that you give to all of these things. That, oh, I'm growing and these relationships are growing me. Yeah. So when you think of X that you dated, oh, I learned that and I grew this way. When you think of Y, I learned that I grew, when you look, I learned that I grew this way. That's what it is. Okay. When you change the meaning, you stop feeling down. You will not feel anyway because you change the meaning. Mean. So you're not counting it as joy. Is that okay? All right. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Is there another person that wants to share something? Maybe you're very down. You've gone through something. You don't know how to interpret it. Yeah. Another person. Yeah. Just raise up your right hands, you know, and I can call and. I raise up your right hand. All of you in the gallery, I hope you know I can't see you. So if you are in the gallery, you need to probably stand up or something like that. There's no way I can see anybody in the gallery. It's very, from the stage, you don't really get to see the gallery. You know. Yeah. So any other person? There's someone. Okay, there's a guy with the glasses. There's a, there's a guy on your right hand side. Then I will take the last person. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Pastor. Good afternoon. What um, is your name, please? I'm Odera. Odera. Yeah. So, um, what I've struggled with, or what I'm struggling with currently, is um, I had to grow up fast. Um, I had to like leave home. Quite, um, when I mean leave home, like as a guy, I had to like just. What, what age did you leave home? Uh, probably uh, ever since I got into uni, like seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, okay. Like I was. Um, was that good or bad? Um, it was good to some extent, but um, I have, I'm the first, I have six younger siblings. Okay. So um, I became a third parent and the family uh, mm. quite early. So uh, right now, looking back, I see um, there's some sort of connection I wish I had with my siblings, no matter how much I try. Um, there's always that, it's more of a parental like that so they look at you as like their dad exactly yeah. you know uh, and uh, as a guy you know so how I, does that affect you um it affects me in a way because i'm i see I, i'm around families now you know i've seen relationships where i wish um um i had such back home you know I with your siblings right yeah both siblings and both so my what parents is the problem uh the problem is um they're just things uh, i don't know how to replicate that at this stage and um, even as much as I try, um, it, just, it just doesn't seem right or it seems too late, you know, and um, it's something I've struggled to move, you know, beyond. So. Mm. Why do you want to have this relationship? Because uh, I think we're all growing older. My younger sister just had a kid, so I know um, this is, today is the, I probably think is the closest we can be as a family, because every day we're all growing. Why do you want to have the relationship? Uh, I guess it feels good. You see the problem? Mm -hmm. Once you don't have a why, you can't find a how. You know, let me tell you something. Once you have a why, you'll find a how. The major reason is that you want something you don't know why you want. So, and the reason I'm saying so, once your why is big, your how will become very obvious. The other day, I was helping someone in the men's fellowship and he's on, he, he, he was saying that he was taking cocaine and drugs. And he said, 
how, why does it keep going back? I said, because you don't know why you, stay, you want to stay free. So why do you want it? The reason why is that, in your, I'm not saying you don't want it, but how big is your why? Let me give an example right now. Who here is very difficult for you to raise 500,000? Right? Just raise your hand. Anybody here? Family K. Anybody here? You? Yeah. But if they told you that your mother is sick and this woman is for cancer operation, won't you find it? Well, it must come out. Because you know what I just gave you? I gave you a why. As soon as I gave you a why, your how came. But naturally, you said you could not raise 500,000. Now, I doubled the money and they say, if they say your mother needs one million for cancer operation, won't you find it? And the same lady said, it must come out. The reason why is that as soon as our why became very clear, very strong, the how she will go about it came out. I understand you want it, but I don't think it's strong enough for you. So I think the first step is that, number one, I understand the, I understand the dynamics. First of all, first of all, I can tell you what is happening. You have a very lonely life. Yes or no? Uh, relatively, yes. I would say yes. What am I relatively? Uh, relatively is because I'm from the outside. It seems like, yo, you know everyone, you know people. And, no, I don't know about outside. Yeah, just exactly. a you by a person, you're very lonely. Uh, yes or no? Yes. Basically. Exactly. So why did you say relatively? Um, yeah, I mean... Because myself. you're talking to me like your child. Yeah, that's what you do. So let me tell you what you're doing. I know what you're doing. You're not doing consciously. And it's not something spiritual. You, what is happening is that because you've always been a parent figure, you cannot admit that you have flaws and you're vulnerable. So even me, the pastor, I'm asking you, and instead of you to say that, oh, I'm lonely, I'm scared, I'm by myself, it's difficult for you to admit. But that's what human beings do. And the reason why is that once you relate from that parent figure mentality, you will never admit your vulnerability. Am I speaking something that you heard? Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. And that's why I say, your why needs to be big because your why is going to make you change because you're already wired like a parent. Number one, because you grew very fast, there are things you're going to miss in your life. You'll be very lonely. You'll be too responsible. Even your wife is going to suffer a little because you'll always try to father her. So you just expect her to understand that these are her children. I'm like, I didn't come with those children. I have not had children yet. Fact, yeah, I had that issue in one of my relationships. Oh, yeah, of course you're going to have the yeah. issue. But, but the issues are not really on the outside. The issues are with you. So you're the one that says, so, but the key thing is that what has happened to you is not, it's not a bad thing. It's just how you grew. I also grew up very fast. I've been a pastor since when I was very young. And because of that, I lost some things. So one of my friends talking about cartoons, I never watched cartoons. Till tomorrow, I don't know how to play video games. Because I grew up very, I lost some things. But the thing is that the way I processed my loss was I processed it in my game. That, well, I lost it by game this. So the first thing is that I don't want you to feel as if to regret. No, 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 there's nothing to regret. All you have to think from your, from your game. So when you think from your game, you come from a very empowering perspective. Then the second thing you want to do is that, so what happened in the past was not what I wanted. It happened to me. So the next thing I want to do is that, how can I make this happen now intentionally? How do I be intentional about it? So in my spare time right now, there are things I never did as a child. I'm trying to do to cover from my childhood. So last Sunday, if you were here, I used the poetry. But you don't know that every week now, I go and do poetry. Yeah, I do poetry. I play with clay and I'm molding things. And it's very funny. Like, <laughs> listen, the reason why is that I can give myself the gifts I missed from my childhood. I, I don't need someone. And that has been intentional. You know what has been intentional? You need to stop talking to them like your parents. You know, like your, what's your younger brother's name? Younger brother or uh, sister? Samuel. Samuel. Carry him and just trim on the floor. <laughs> Like that was a head brain disturbance. It disturbed your head, right? Yeah. Your head was disturbed, right? Because that's yeah. what brothers do. Just mm -hmm. carry him and throw him on the floor. And say, What are you doing, bro? I said, Throw me back. <laughs> that's how you start. <laughs> and what you're doing is that you are building your life what intentionally. Yeah. You know, when girls tell me that they can't find someone to marry, I'm like, What are you talking about? Do you go to mechanic workshops? At least all the guys get have cars. Make your car break down, then go there on Saturday. <laughs> if they will not come to you, can you be intentional? <laughs> they don't 
Listen to church. And let me tell you something. It's only church people that go, the ones that are not church people, they are in um, eye fitness right now. And they choose the premium eye fitness. You think I don't see them? They choose the adding that has money. And when they wear it, they will wear very skinny something. And they know when the rich guy comes, they'll just say, oh, 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 oh. They'll just say, Coach, I'm tired. Let me massage it. I'm tired. If you think I'm joking, go to iFitness this evening or tomorrow morning. You, you'll see me doing, I'm a born again, I'm a born again. The Bible says, be as wise as serpents. You know, I have instructors that in this church, gym instructors. They told me that when those girls come, they will, from the cars, they say, what was that car? What time does it come to the gym? They will be asking. You will not think, what, what, what machine does she use? You will not see the girl beside you every day. And you know, because you are there every day, you are on the chair meeting together. You will be like, ah, okay. The key thing I'm saying, I mean, I branched off, right? But the key thing I'm saying is that what you don't have naturally, you can have it intentionally. But the reason why is that, I mean, the way I see you, your life will be going very well because you're, you're very responsible. I, I see you're very responsible. But you will not enjoy, you will not be a very happy person because you'll be too responsible to be happy. You know they can be too responsible to be happy. Yeah. Are you too responsible to be happy? Yes or no? Yeah, I can be happier, sir. You can be happier. Yes, sir. Yeah, but you're too, you're too. You cannot enjoy. You're too responsible. Yeah. yeah. Um, Even my wife told me. We said that you don't have to relax, and it's true. I, I'm learning it. You don't have to relax. Just, I said, just play. Just forget everything. I said, wow, that's a great life. <laughs> Praise God. So you just need to come, 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 come. Let's break this parental image in your mind. Let's break this parental image in your mind. Just, just come. Yeah. Sit down on the stage. Yeah, just sit down. Yeah, just sit down. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. What song do you like as a child to be singing? Take the microphone. It feels so uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, what song did I like as a child? See the probably. discomfort in his right leg moving. <laughs> discomfort is moving his leg. I mean, I move a lot. So I move no, it's not. It's not moving. It's the tension in your leg that's making your leg move. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, uh, I mean, we grew up to the. Just uh, tell me the song you like. A willow, as a, a willow dance. Uh, a willow uh, dance. Song, yeah. Which so gospel we'll song do you like as a child? <laughs> yeah. You can't sing a willow uh, here. <laughs> okay. Uh, when yeah. it came to gospel, uh, we grew up to like. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I live in my head now, but um, I mean that was one of them. Which one? Jesus loves me on the <laughs> mountain, in, in the, the valley. How were you singing it? Let him sing. I mean the sea. <laughs> <laughs> you are in the sea. Uh, uh, yeah. So um, the funny thing, the funny thing is, I'm not today. asking you to talk. <laughs> okay. Yeah, only talking to cover up all of these things. Enjoy it. So I had, I no, you don't have to say anything. Up. On the mountain, in, in the, the valley, valley, on the mountain, the valley. Valley. Yeah, uh, Stand up. So yeah. Thank you, church. How do you feel? Very strange, right? I mean, that, that was refreshing. Uh, oh, that was refreshing. Did you see how refreshing that is for him? But you can give yourself these gifts all the time. Huh? I'll try. Because you know why you would try? Because you don't want to. You can, you, can, you can be very responsible and very unhappy. But I want to be responsible and very happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at your beard. Yeah. Yeah. All the girls Thank really you, like it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can I carry you on my back? No, I'm heavy. <laughs> Are you going to carry your brother this week? I'll, I'll try. I'll You'll try. try. He's a big boy as well. He's a big boy. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You're, but you're bigger. Look at you. Look at you. What, what do you want to use this for? <laughs> All right. Well, praise thank God. Thanks, sir. <laughs> the key thing is that you must be intentional. 
whatever you feel as if you lost give it to yourself give it to yourself give it to yourself give yourself the gift of love you don't understand buy flowers put it in your room go back and come back and meet it send flowers to yourself like go to a website write write a note abike you are the sweetest girl in this world it's amazing and send it to yourself in the office and let the delivery guy come with a big bouquet are you like oh my god give yourself that gift nobody owes you happiness you owe it to yourself first praise god and the reason i'm saying that you know the way you watch online people always have to make you happy always have to buy you lunch always have to buy let me tell you something you buy dinner you'll be surprised who wants to eat with you once you start buying that start posting pictures i ate here i ate here you're like ah when you're going come and be taking me along and let me tell you the secret once you have formed to be with person everybody wants to be with you praise god my brother so the first thing is to find your big why yeah and it's not really about them it's your big why why do i want to do this because why is it important the change will require a lot from you if your why is not strong you will not be able to do it very well do you understand what i'm talking about where's the last person that we close yeah another person that we can just close but have you been blessed so far today okay is there someone that you need to hurry we 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 yeah just about three minutes good afternoon pastor i cannot hear you at all please tell me your name yeah tell me your name and speak out louder good afternoon pastor good afternoon my name is kemi okay so you mentioned about um the question that the disciples asked jesus yeah and then there was um the question as to why something happened to the blind man as to why he was blind was it the scene of his parents or his was it the same with one was it the scene of his parents or his own sin yeah how do you reconcile and then you said that um it's very important for you to um i can't remember the word but i wanted to ask how do you reconcile certain things that happen in your life even as a child and god's love you find yourself questioning yourself you find yourself questioning god is it that god has favorites does god have favorites does god treat other people better even as a child what happened to you when you were young i have a very i have a lot of traumatic experiences basically for my family okay can you tell me top two three okay the one that led to me asking this question in particular is remembering um when i was younger i yeah. was about say 10 or 11. we lost my sister yeah she was um maybe five or okay. thereabout I used to be the one to walk her and my younger sister to school. So it was hard on me because she was like my baby. She died. How did she die? Well, they said she was sick. What does that mean? That's all you know, she was sick? <laughs> yes, she was sick. Okay. But... But you there know was more. A lot, there was a lot of... There was a lot surrounding her death. It's not something that we need to delve into Talking right to. now okay just yeah. tell me one thing you think why, why do you think she died just you don't have to delve in just tell me why you think she died i can't say you can't say yes for but sure i, I know she was she was ill okay she had typhoid and she was in the hospital receiving treatments and she had even like gotten blood and all of that but she died so it was, do you think it was poor health management or it was no. finances uh, no it was neither of any of that it was i don't know spiritual I don't know. I can't speak on that. But just tell me what However, you think. I'm not saying speak. Just tell me what you think. Okay, so I said that. I mentioned that it, it comes from my family. It comes from the family that I come from. I come okay. from a very troubled family. Troubled family. Yes. Okay. So in, when that kind of thing happens, there are connotations to it. There's like, oh, this person, that person did so this. So like spiritual undertone, right? Yes. Okay, precisely. I understand that. I don't want to go into details. Okay, I understand that you're trying so to avoid this, that. This happened. And so that then, was the first one. You yeah, lost your sister. The this second happened, one. And then, you know, it was hard on my mom because um, my dad was not around to help her through all of that. And then my mom, I don't know what she thought. I don't know what she was imagining in her mind. And then she said, oh, she was going to replace her baby. So she puts in again. 
And then I remember a particular day. So my mom is a staunch Christian. My mom, my mom doesn't joke about things of God. As at the time when she wanted to join, um, she wanted to join the choir, and she could not even afford no, like the don't, uniform. Don't, don't worry. Don't talk about your mom. Let's focus okay. about the so, trauma about you. Um, uh, I remember a particular day when my mom was pregnant and then we, 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 we used to go to churches every, every time because my mom knew that there was like, you know, a lot of battles to be fought and then we'd go to church all the time. So this particular day we went to um, vigil and as we were leaving the vigil, we were, we were walking out and my mom just started like screaming in pain and then she realized that um, she was having a miscarriage. So she right when we were leaving the church she had a miscarriage and i was there like stunned there was just not there was nothing that could bring me back from there because we just finished praying in church we just finished vigil and we're going home and my mom loses the child so the second thing that happened was that you lost your sister then you lost the child yes okay yeah and the effect of that in my house, in my family, was the house became very cold. The house became like, it was a place where nobody wanted to be in anymore because there was a lot of um, sadness, there was a lot of cold, like that, just that coldness that comes What did death. you study in school? Brings me back to my, to another scenario. I studied law. You studied law. Why did you study law? My dad made me study law. What would he have studied personally? I'm not sure. So you didn't want to study law? I didn't care to study law, but I could do it, so why not? Okay. So and then, Pastor, just a minute. No, I don't want you to. I'm the one leading the conversation, so yeah. Okay, yeah, because it's going to give you like, um, like perspective, more okay. perspective. Okay. 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 So coming to this law thing, I went to law school, finished law school. While I was um, at my cult, I sent my dad like a picture of myself in the hall, and then. This was in Abuja. By the time I go home two days later, it was another story entirely. So my dad had already sent like pictures and you know shared pictures with my, my family members, all the family members, including his other wives and, and all of that. But then by the time I came back to Lagos to say, Oh daddy, thank you so much. Um I'm done. Da, 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 da. My dad said to me, You did not pass your line. And my dad being who he is, is a very, very violent and dramatic man. Very, and when I mean violent, I'm talking real violence. He doesn't hold back on anything. So he starts to like pick stuff, he starts to like throw stuff at me, he starts to like act really crazy and I'm like, what exactly is going on? What did I do wrong? So out of, this is just even things that I can think of off the top of my head. There are several other No, you told me you were trying to tell me this to give me a lot of perspective. Yes. Yeah. So what is the perspective you're trying to give me? That I have had situations or I've, I've experienced things that didn't necessarily need to happen. Mm. It, there was no point in those things happening. Uh, how am I going to be? Am I going to say, oh, okay, my sister dying, is it my mom's sin? Is it my dad's sin? Is it yeah. my sister's sin? Or is it my mom being heady or stubborn, going ahead to have another? When someone dies, I don't think you're looking for who is responsible. You're looking for a perspective that can sustain you, your peace of mind. Because even if you know who is responsible, does it bring back the dead? Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so bothered about... So, do you want me to respond to you or you want to keep going? I'd like an answer as to why... Yeah, so what is your, what is your question again? So, my question is... How am I able to not believe that God doesn't have favorites? Are you able not to believe that God doesn't have yes. favorites? Yes. Okay. Let, just thank you for letting me. That was a very simple question, but the, the journey was very far. What's your late sister's name? Favor. What's your name? Kemi. So God favors Kemi over, over favor. Because favor is dead and you are alive. Because you need to explain how you're alive, why you're not the one that is dead. So if you talk, if you if you want to use natural circumstances to explain the favoritism of God, you are God's favorite because your sister died. Can I speak? 
Sure. Okay. You need to answer my question. You need to your question. You need to answer my question, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm thankful to God for preserving my life. No, you're not answering my question. You just need to answer my question. I'm not saying don't thank God. You will thank God after now. Yeah. You need to thank, you need to answer my question. So you are God's favorite. I don't know about that. So your sister is not God's favorite. Of course, that's why you know, she's died. You know what? Yeah. Because I know that as a Christian, when you die, yeah. you go to a better place. Yeah. I, so she's God's favorite for dying. I believe that God preserved her. God preserved her. Yes. So you want God to preserve you right now? I believe that. God and I'm just asking you a question. Do you want God to preserve you right now? Okay, Pastor. What I'm the reason why I'm saying so is that I'm, I want to show you. I'm trying to establish a pattern of your thinking. And a pattern of your thinking, I, I'm trying to show you where it's coming from. I, from. I can really understand where you're coming from. So the first thing is that from your family background, from when you were young, you were thought that life is unfair, your life is a battle, and things are wrong. That's the premise on which you were raised up in life. Unfortunately, it's the meaning they give to you. And when things happen, you always look for that meaning everywhere. You know, I spoke about the power of meaning. I will tell you what the power of meaning is. The power of meaning is that, this is Mrs. Sasakiki, stand up. Sasakiki is one of our leaders in church. If she sees me and does not greet me, because I know her, I will say she didn't see me. Because meaning is that, because she's a respectful, godly, lovely, jovial woman of God, she will always greet me. So, meaning is that when she does something out of character, the meaning I have, which is belief, I use it to correct it. Please sit down. Let me give another example. Nene, stand up. Nene is a rude, loose, social media influencer, hate pastors. She saw me and greeted me. I said, ah, I don't know what she's greeting me for. But she did a good thing. But I'm not able to accept as a good thing because of the power of what? Meaning. Because in my mind, she's an enemy. She's someone that should not greet me. Someone that doesn't like me. And if she greets me, then something is wrong. I'm only saying to you, most of the time, I'm not saying expressions are not good or bad. But the impact it has on us is the meaning we give to it. And you can, you need to choose the life you live. I'm not, my, my, my sister, I'm not disputing that it's painful. But you need to accept something. The more I give meaning, you can have your sense. The more I give painful experiences and painful meaning to life, the more painful my life will be. This way I'm going today, oh. And if you get this, I've done a great job. The more I give painful meaning to life experiences, the more painful my life will be. The more I give positive meaning to life experiences, the more positive my life will be. And let me tell you something I said last week. In life, good is always available. Bad is always available. Just choose what you focus on. And the reason I said that to you is that I understood your sister died, which is very painful. That should never have happened. But the question is that why are you are alive? Because you're seeing it from the pain of what was lost. You have not seen it from the gain of what you have. So one of the things you need to ask yourself is this. And I'm not... I wish I could say because the story is very painful. So, you know, I don't have the perfect situation. But what I'm saying to you is that if you want to live, because as we're talking, you were crying, you were breaking down, and I can tell you're in a lot of pain. I, I, am I correct? Am I correct? W where is she? Yeah, am I correct? Please, can you give the microphone? Yeah, just speak here. Yeah. Just speak. It's working. It's working. Yes, yes. You're, you're, correct. Of pain. you're very unhappy, right? And a lot of bad things still happen to you, right? Yes. Yeah. And the reason why they will keep happening is because primarily you've given your life, there's a meaning of negativity you've given to life. And unfortunately, I'm not even sure you can understand me because if that's how you were raised, you may not be able to see another way except God opens your mind. I'm telling you, it's just like how you get a white man to taste a goosey soup. It's difficult. His tongue cannot taste it because he's wired to taste in other ways. So like if you don't eat pepper and you eat pepper, your tongue cannot taste it. Because you don't really taste with your tongue, you taste with your head, your mind. Your, your mouth, your tongue touches it. The interpretation of pepper is in your mind. It's not like sugar. I have an uncle, if he mistakenly eats ice cream, it will, it will throw it out. Because ice cream has a horrible taste in his mouth. But the taste is the same. But you taste with your mind. 
is the meaning you give to it the meaning becomes what it is so back to you my sister the first thing is that um there are many questions you could have asked but what question did they ask me let's go back to the question i want to make sure i answer your question perfectly i asked how is it possible to, after all of the experiences and i'm not even saying based on myself alone but like the people that will experience stuff and then they'll question whether god loves them yeah. or whether god ever you know how in the bible there no no, no i want i don't want to go very far okay, you want to know if god loves you or not you, you, you know you know you want to know if god loves you or not right yeah john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his himself and let me tell you something as simple as that is that would be very difficult for you to accept and the reason why is that the meaning around the things that have happened to you has amplified your experiences. I know, and let me tell you something. I'm not sure if I can convince you otherwise. I'm telling you the truth. And the reason why I can't convince you otherwise is it's the way you were raised. You were raised with it from a child. But what I can assure you is this. If you keep having that meaning, your past will become your future. But I want to help you so that your past does not become your future and the distinction and say you know what and this is what you must think about my sister you've thought all your life like this and see what has become do you want to think some other way and give it three years and see what your life will become i'm trying the thing is that you have no choice if you want a different future and it's, it's not a one-day journey because it didn't come into your system in one day. It's going to be gradual. And the first thing you have to convince yourself is that. So the reason, and I always tell me in church, if you attend harvesters, wow. How is it this? If you, oh, thank you, Lord. If you judge the love of God on your life based on experiences, you will miss it. How many of you thought your mother did not like you when you were young? Look around, look around. The reason why is that if you judge your mother's love from how they treated when you were young you would have not understood it but as you grew older did you understand the love yes. that's it so sometimes experience is not a good judge of god's love for us but as you grow older it will come together and be like oh wow so this was what he was preventing me for this is what he was saying to me you know you know <laughs> there's some people my mother really was against me associating with i didn't understand it now i'm older i kind of understand what she was saying you know, and that's what I have to say. Do you have another question? No, sir. Have I been able to help a little? Yes, sir. How have I helped? That I should keep on trusting God. And that it's not a one-day thing. It's a process. And eventually, God. Do you have friends? love will manifest. Do you have friends? Yes, I do. Are they very positive? Well... Yeah, to an extent, to some extent, yes. I have to ask you to see Pastor, see Bolu. Yeah, yeah. Afterwards, you need someone to sit down with you, you know, because there's a lot more we could say, but we're going to keep taking time and time and time and time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Praise the Lord. If God does not love you, why did you get the microphone today? Just one, I don't want to ask. Sit and give me the microphone. Hello? I was going to leave after the third service. No, but you didn't answer my question. If God doesn't love you, how did you get the microphone today? That's what I'm saying. I was going to leave after the third service and then some, I don't know, something kept... If God does not love you, why did you get the microphone today? question i got it because god loved me i got it because satan loved me that's all <laughs> yes which one i got it because god cares about me why are you laughing right now that's because i can feel god's love you know why you can feel god's love the reason why you can feel god's love is because you've chosen to give meaning positive meaning to something All the while in the discussion, I was looking for something that was positive that could help you see. So you wanted to go. Satan wanted to go, but God kept you back. 
God held you. I've gone beyond time, but God is holding me back so that I can talk to you. This is God's love. So this is what you must process. Listen, the more, and this is power of meaning. The more I focus on God's love, the more I see God's love. But the more I go like, um, this happened, this happened, this happened. I also have bad experiences. But listen, I don't talk about my bad experiences from the world, how they affect me. I talk about it on the way, how they have got grown me. So you need to ask yourself, this is what you need to ask yourself. What, what is the good thing this, all of this bad experience has done for you? Give her the microphone. What's the good thing all of this? Yeah. You are very responsible, aren't you? Or you're not? You're very responsible, aren't you? Well. Tell me if you're not. Just say, oh, pass, I'm not that very responsible. That's all. I have my responsible. You have a very high level. Compared to your age mate, you're very responsible, yes or no? I can't say. I don't know. You don't know? Okay. No. That's good. Hmm. Are you loose? Are you serious? I'm just trying to find out things. So what I experienced was that... You see, the, the thing is that anytime I draw it's a very good experience, you will stay away from it and tell me a bad experience to make me feel as if that good experience is not that good. No, I was going okay. to say that. But you graduated as a law student. Yes, I did. What did you finish with? 2-2. Two, two. Wow, very impressive. Is that not good? I don't know. What? She's what? You're a lawyer. That's a great thing, though. Yes, Is it but, not? But my dad. You know the thing? I'm just setting traps for you, and you're entering it one by one by one by one. Let me tell you the trap you're entering, I'm setting for you. What I'm doing is that I'm telling you all the good things in your life, and it's amazing how you cannot stay on them. You look at the good things, I said, mm, eh, bad thing, I stay here. Your daughter is a very violent man. Is that not true? Yes. Did you see? As soon as I said negative, your answer was right. Yes. But anyone I said that is good, I don't know. Maybe. So it tells you. It see. I'm only showing you why you're very unhappy and why you think, because you cannot dwell on good memories. And that's why I say, from when you were young, you were trained that way. Hold on. Let me help you. Ways like this, your mom, right? Yes or no? I don't know. Who always tells you all the bad things that happen when you get home today? Who always tells me? Who will tell you that this is not go well? See what your father has done. See what your mother has done. We don't have food. This and who, who says all of those things to you? My mom. Yeah. Because it comes from somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And even though your mom prays a lot. She needs to work on her negativity. Um, I don't, I don't think that it's her fault for. I'm the first child. No, I I'm never said it's her fault. No. no, no I'm saying see, that. See, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I even say it's anybody's fault now? No, what I'm saying is. If no, I'm not even saying it's her fault. I'm only telling you. I'm not saying it's anybody's her fault. How can when I'm not God? How can I say someone has a fault? What am I? Don't I have my own fault? My brother, my sister, I have fault too. I know your mom and you don't have fault. Me, I'm faulty. It's only grace that makes me see me this way. The reason I'm saying so is that I'm only wondering in my mind because when you see someone that is very negative, you need to ask yourself, what did you pick it up from? Because you always pick it up from where? Somewhere. Actually, if it's dad, then it's my dad. It's your dad. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it might be your dad. Yeah, I agree. You know, so it could be, you know, yeah. So, are you going to stop being negative? I will. When? From today. Or some, sometime. 
How will you stop being negative? How will you stop being negative? Focus on good memories. Let me just tell you what you do. This will help you be, stop being negative. Every morning when you wake up, get a book. Write three things you are grateful for. In the evening, get a book. Write three things you are grateful for. If you do it for 21 days, your life will change. You would. What? It, what? It works. You see, people have tried it here before and they say it works. Yeah. In fact, there was a lady that told me that, ah, the, the thing you used on me in London. I said, no, I didn't use anything on you. <laughs> ah, don't add to what is not there. Oh. Praise God. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Lady, stand up. Three things you are grateful for today. You take the microphone. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here this morning. Wow. One. Two. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be addressed by Pastor Bolaji. Great. Three. I'm also grateful to God for helping me lift a weight off my shoulder today. You are grateful to speak up today. Yes. How do you feel right now? I can't explain it. How? What can't you explain? I mean, I feel a bit light. You feel a bit light? Yes. The only reason why you feel light is because you've chosen to focus on what is positive. Philippians chapter 4 says, think on this. It told us what to think about. Whatsoever things are lovely. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, put it there. Whatsoever things are lovely, that kind, it says on these things, think on these things. Where is it now? Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Put it there quickly. I'm done. Is the scripture coming up? Read, read. Where's that lady? Read it, read it, read it. Finally, what? Read it. Finally, brethren. Yeah. Whatsoever no, what's your name? Kemi. Finally, Kemi. Finally. finally. So, finally, Kemi, yeah. Finally, Kemi. Whatsoever things are true. true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good reports. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. It's a think of things that are of good reports. What is good report? You are a lawyer. That's good report. You finish with a tutu. Uh, this lady is saying tutu is hard. He said tutu is easy. This is prayer point. He did tutu. Think of it. Praise God. Thank you, sir. Amen. Let's pray. Stand to your feet, everyone, please.